Black Museum. Its affiliated stations present Escape. All of Fantasy. Inner Sanctum Mystery. Lights out. Welcome, weirdos. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Retro Radio, old-time radio in the dark, presented by Weird Darkness. Each week I bring you a show from the golden age of radio, but still in the genre of Weird Darkness. I'll have stories of the macabre and horror, mysteries and crime, and even some dark science fiction. If you're new here, welcome to the show, and be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And if you're already a member of this weirdo family, please take a moment and invite someone else to listen in with you. Spreading the word about the show helps it to grow. If you're here because you're already a fan of nostalgic audio and print, you'll want to email weirddarkness at radioarchives.com. When you do that, you'll get an instant reply with links to download full-length pulp audiobooks, pulp ebooks, and old-time radio shows for free. That's weirddarkness at radioarchives.com. Coming up, it's an episode from The Witch's Tale, entitled Boa Goddess, originally aired October 5, 1931, and so popular they re-aired the episode on July 31, 1933 and March 18, 1937. One of the earliest horror series ever aired, The Witch's Tale was a much-loved radio program for New York kids during its time, which is from 1931 to 1938. The show's host was known as Old Nancy, the Witch of Salem, played by Adelaide Fitzallen in the beginning, along with her cat called Satan. Due to its popularity, The Witch's Tale was attempted to be adapted into a television series. However, despite the efforts to do so, it did not happen. Probably just ahead of its time, it would likely fit in very nicely with the creepy kids shows of today. Nevertheless, this radio series is one of the most remembered. Now bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness as we listen to The Witch's Tale and Boa Goddess. Blood-killing tales told by old Nancy, the witch of Salem, and Satan, her wild black cat. They're waiting, waiting for you, now. Goddess. <laughs> the Boa Goddess. <laughs> this is Morgan, 
Then you are getting close. They ought to be, according to that picture writing Marianne gave me. Hold up that torch, Dutch. Yeah. I don't see no flat stones yet. Don't you said we got to find? If that girl had only come along to show us, we wouldn't have to fool around like this. You have been among these Indians long enough to know their women cannot come on sacred ground. If she is the high priest's daughter, you'd think she'd take a chance on the taboo. Especially with her love and me the way she does. She has taken chance enough as it is. You will find what he seek and get away into the jungle. You will know it was by their aid. Then, her life will be. Look, what of it? She's only a squaw. Still, Marianne is a cute little trick at that. <laughs> you got such a sense of humor, Morgan. Every time you call that Indian girl Marianne, I got to laugh. <laughs> Shut up, you fool. You think you'll be on fire if you know what will happen. Ah, uh, keep your shirt on, Frenchie. It is kind of comical, Dutch. But I call all my girls Marianne. And not being able to speak this one flingo, I don't know a real moniker anyway. Why, you be careful. Uh, we're safe enough. Every man in the village is out in the jungle for that ceremony they're holding. Yes. The ceremony which proves how much we have to fear. For out there tonight, they will let a boa constrictor crush a man to death. Listen. Three beats on the draw. That means they're getting ready to kill that fellow now. Yeah. God, if my folks back in Jersey knew their darling boy was living among a bunch of Yucatan Indians who just made sacrifices to snakes, they'd turn over in their graves. After three months among them, it is still difficult for me to realize that we have found the lost tribe of Aztecs living as their fathers did six hundred years ago. It was lucky they found us when they did. Another day lost in that bush, we would have been dead. That is what makes me dislike this thing we do tonight. These people save our lives. They took us in. And now, we plan to rob them. I hope French uranial of Devil's Island ain't developing a sense of gratitude all of a sudden. And they have self time on Devil's Island, Morgan. But I, like you, am not wanted in Ecuador for murder. That's because you never had the nerve enough to kill a man, you yellow skull. You're not going to talk to that... Oh, I'm Morgan French. We cannot quarrel. You're that. right, Dutch. When we get what's underneath them free flat stones, it'll take all three of us to fight our way back to civilization through that bush. Ah, forget it, Frenchie. <sighs> you are sure you'll find them or else in that temple... I've already shown you the little ones Mary Ann gave me, and she's told me in her sign language there's big ones where we're going. If it were not that all three of us are needed, as you say, to make escape, I wonder would Dr. and me have heard about them. What do you have stopped that? Look, Morgan, aren't you? Here is three flat stones. This is the place. We found it. Now don't try to lift them. There's a trick to it. She showed me in the picture writing. You push the stone in the middle, and I got it. Look at that. A passage is open. The temple's underneath. Come on, down these stairs. Wait. I do not like this place. What's the matter? I don't know. He's dizzy feeling that I've started. I feel something funny, too. Ah, both of you are yellow. Give me that torch. I'm going down these stairs. You can't call me yellow. Don't prove you're not. Come on. Ugh. He did it. Dark down here. Morgan, hold up that torch. Uh, we don't need it in a minute. According to Mary Ann, this passage takes a sudden bend into the temple proper where a fire is always burning. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it is light. Yeah, it's the temple. Oh, my dear. My God. Good God. Up the stairs for our lives. Quick, wait. Wait, wait, wait you poor dumb idiot. <laughs> it's only a statue. A statue? Yeah. <laughs> but it had me going for a minute. It's so natural looking. I thought it was a real honest-to-God snake coiled up to strike. Hey, you know, it is an idol. <laughs> the image of the boa goddess. Hold up that torch, Morgan. The stone snake has a woman's face. Well, Marianne told me the truth. The idol's eyes are emeralds. Bigger ones than I have ever seen. And where the snake body joins the woman's face, there is a necklace. More emeralds. We shall be rich. 
Three millionaires. Let me climb up there and get them. <clears throat> Say, what was that? A drum. It sounded as you touched the fear. Ah, there ain't no one but a drum in here. This is just a big bare room. Oh, it is okay. It is a warning. You are in a secret place. You must not defile the holy image. Bunk. Hand me your knife, Dutch. What are you going to do? Cut off that necklace and pry loose them emeralds. No, 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 no. Ah, oh, that's what we came here for, you fool. Here goes. Again, that drum. Morgan, come here. A curse will fall on us if you take those stones. Wait, Morgan, there is something funny in this place. I'll go when I get these stones. No, 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 no. It's all right, I got them. Look. Those from the eyes are as big as eggs. I'm rich. I'm rich. Let's get out of your tree. All right, I've got all I want now. And I'm a millionaire. A millionaire. Off these stairs. Let's get the prey. Wait, listen. She took come from inside the snake itself. And it struck three times. Yes, three times. Like we had it in the bush outside. It means the Boa Goddess will take soon a human sacrifice. The used guys whine like a pair of old women. We got away from the Indians all right, didn't we? And with another day's chopping, we'll be out of this jungle and safe in civilization. Forget that hooey about a curse and something folly in us. We are not out of this jungle yet. And there is something folly in us, Morgan. I feel it all about us in the bush. There's something I know is death. Ah, your grandmother. Well, I, I am like Frenchie. I did not like those storm beats when we left the temple. Are you guys dumb enough to think a heathen statue of a big snake with a woman's face can really do you any harm? It is not the statue I hear, but the thing it stands for. People's thoughts and their beliefs. Listen, Morgan, all gods are the same by different names. For how many centuries, we don't know. An intelligent race has worshipped and feared that great snake we have insulted. Hui. Three times that drum beat, like before the Boer goddess takes our human sacrifice. Since that's what's troubling you fellas most, let's figure the drum was calling Mary Ann. Them engines have probably finished hers by now. Too bad. She was a cute little trick, even if she was only a squaw. <laughs> Now, well, there's one easy way for you guys to clean yourselves if you think there's a curse on them emeralds. You just don't have to take your share. No, you don't, Morgan. Ah, you would like to cheat us out of that. I thought that'd bring you to time. Uh, it's too hot to do any more traveling till night. I ain't gonna grab a few winks. Your turn to scare up some grub, Frenchie. All right. Give me your pistols. Next. I've only got two bullets left. You can bring down a couple of birds with your machine, but you're not saving those two bullets for something in particular. What do you mean? When we are out of this jungle, you will no longer need that and me to help you. You think that I... I will not argue that point. It doesn't matter anyway. I go and fuck that. <laughs> that phrase stir bugs crazy as a loon. Maybe. Why are you saving those two bullets, Morgan? Hey, you don't think I'm planning anything against pals like you and Frenchie, do you? Forget it. There's emeralds enough for the three of us. I'm rich. Inside of a month, Dutch, I'm going to be sitting in the swellest hotel in New York. I'm going to become a gentleman, join highfalutin clubs, and go in for society and live like a king. Yeah, live. That Frenchman gives me a pain talking about death falling us through the jungle. All on account of a couple of drum beats you heard in that heathen temple. Morgan, the drum is here. It can't be. Gee, have you got me here and things? Three times it beat. It was like that night. Oh, don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. Something's got him. Oh, look, a broken stricter. The other little squirrels crossing out his life. There is a curse. 
It's breaking. No, I won't believe it. The jungle's full of snakes. He just happened to cross a boar's path. Run, Dutch. Run before it comes for us. Are you going to try to kill him? You got a pistol, Morgan? Fool. I'm saving my two bullets. Leave him there and run, your fool. Now we can split his share. Yeah. We split his share of death. So he is just the first of us to go. I don't believe in that stuff. Then look. Look back. For the snake has turned its head. Say! It has a face of a woman! Yeah. The face of the boar goddess. Run! 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 Sure, young fella. I'm not stuck up like ordinary millionaires. I'll be glad to give your newspaper the true story of how me and Dutch got here to New York. I'm certainly much obliged, Mr. Morgan. Do you realize how interested the public is in the man who owns the largest emerald on earth? Yeah, but I don't want the papers printing no lies about me. Don't you be like those other fellows who wrote that I'm a nervous old man because they saw me pacing up and down the room like I'm doing now. And, and don't you say I'm a fear to anything count of me always looking over my shoulder and jumping at funny noises. That is just habits of mine. And don't you dare write there's a curse on my emeralds. There ain't no Indian curse. Of course not, Mr. Morgan. That sensational stuff that you object to is all printed when a flash came in through Associated Press. Seems two madmen had stumbled into a little settlement in Yucatan with a pocket full of emeralds and the story of a third man who'd been crushed to death by a boa constrictor with a woman's face. We couldn't pass up a yarn like that, even though we knew it was ridiculous. And it was ridiculous. Two men have just chopped their way out of the jungle. They're apt to say anything. You're right, that stuff is all a lie. Don't forget to print how I tried to save me dead partner Frenchie when the big snake got him, though. Uh, but don't say the snake had a woman's face. It didn't. That was imagination. And there ain't no curse on my emeralds. None that can reach me on the jungle anyway. What was that, Mr. Morgan? Uh, uh, oh, nothing. Uh, just talking to myself. The jungle makes you do things like that, young fella. It's great to be home in a city again. No snake can follow me to a big town like New York. You've spoken of your partners as Frenchie and Dutch. Will you give me their proper names, Mr. Morgan? Frenchie's dead. Oh, if I could only forget the way he died. Oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, the name I knew Frenchie by was Jean Reynal. And Dutch's real moniker is Adolf Appleman. Adolf Appleman? Yeah, he beat it out west of Chicago as soon as we hit the USA. Oh, he ain't nice to you, reporter guys like me, and don't like his name in the papers. But you can print he don't believe in no curse, neither. Mr. Morgan, haven't you seen this morning's paper? Not yet. I just got up. What a story this will make. No one dreamed he was your partner. Uh, uh, say, what's the matter with you? What are you doing at my telephone? Hello? Get me Wells 292915. Look at that front page, Mr. Morgan. Read those headlines. What? Last night in a Chicago hotel room, Adolf Appleman was crushed to death. Every bone in his body broken. Hello? Hello? Give me city editor. It can come further than the jungle. Them drum beats I heard last night was not a dream. City desk, get this. Whopper of a story. The guy crushed to death in Chicago last night was a partner of the bird who is... I'm next. I'm next. You may have discovered a million dollars worth of emeralds in South America. But that gives you no license to come here to Chicago and try and tell the district attorney's office how to run its business. But I gotta know what killed Dutch. Why did you have his body cremated before I got here to see it? For one reason, because his wife ordered it done after the inquest. His wife? You've already been told that Appleman was married to a Miss Smith a few hours before his death. Another reason was... Because the body was too horribly crushed to serve any real purpose as a clue to the method of murder. Crushed. Crushed like Frenchie. But you say it couldn't have been a snake that done it. You swear it couldn't have been a snake. My dear Mr. Morgan, despite the wild newspaper theories, boa constrictors do not crawl promiscuously around Chicago. And if they did, there could have been no way for such a monster to have entered or left Mr. Appleman's room. No. And no way for it to come here from the jungle. Where was Dutch's wife when it happened? Out of the room at the time, she says. But no woman on earth could have crushed your partner as we found him. 
If that's what you're driving at, for days. I was just wondering if she'd seen anything. If I could only know the way he died. Come in. Uh, excuse me, sir. Mrs. Apple wants to see you. I'll ask you to come in. Now, Mr. Morgan, you can talk to her yourself if you like. How do you do? Ah, good morning, Mrs. Appleman. I'm sure you'll be glad to meet your poor husband's former partner, Mr. Morgan. We have met. Ah, uh, that's funny. I feel that you and me have met someplace before. I meant the Dutch had spoken of you. Oh, I see. But your face is somehow familiar. What was your name before you married him? My first name is Mary Ann. Mary Ann? Poor Dutch has told me it's the name you prefer for women, Mary Ann. <laughs> I think I'd finally fall for a skirt whose real name was Mary Ann. <laughs> How startled you were when I first told you that was my name. Yeah, hit me like a voice from the dead. Not that a score matters, you understand? But you knew even before I spilled the beans about how we got the emeralds and all. Yes, I knew. Dutch had told me everything. I don't know what I'd have done without you since Dutch was killed. Man needs someone around so he won't be all alone to, to think things. After we're married tomorrow, it'll be better still. Only I wish you hadn't made me to wait a whole year. Yeah, a year. And nothing's happened to me. I always knew that curse was just a bunk. You have no fear at all anymore? Me? I never was afraid of anything. My hair turning white and me losing weight like I have is just from a run-down condition, the doctor says. Yet if I only knew how Dutch was killed and the explanation of them drum beats and... I can't get out of my mind the way I saw Frenchie go. You have explained it all perfectly naturally to me a hundred times. You have no real faith in heathen gods, you know. No, of course not. Only, but it was all imagination. The boy I saw in the jungle did not have a human face. That's an awful way to die like Frenchie, Marianne. Do you ever see a man killed by a boar? It wraps itself around him. Coil on coil, doubling and tripling its own strength, and its eyes look into his and fascinate him till he's dumb and helpless. And then slowly the coils tighten until the bones crack like pipe stems, and the flesh becomes like putty, and he only screams once, just once. Oh, I can't die like that. I won't die like that. I'm rich now. I become a gentleman. I'm crazy about you. I want to live... Oh, you don't believe in curses, Mary Ann. You don't believe a crawling thing from the jungle can reach me even here? If I believed in the curse, I would believe neither distance nor civilization would have power to stay its vengeance. But you don't believe. Tell me you don't. Say like me. You think it's all bunk. Yes, I say it like you. Isn't it fortunate we can tell ourselves such things? It's so terrible to be afraid. Were I a god who wished to punish hard for a long time before I... I would make my victims fear. I say, don't talk like that. Sometimes you make me afraid, because I don't know what you mean. But it'll be all right when we're married tomorrow. And then I'll have you to talk to all the time and learn to understand you. You haven't forgotten that for my wedding present, I shall have the great emerald you took from the Aztec temple? Yeah, like I promised. Then, for the other the Dutch gave you, you'll have the two greatest emeralds in the world. The eyes of the boar goddess. It will be nice to have them. They'll match your own eyes, Mary Ann. For they're green, like the emeralds, and they fascinate me. Green and deep, like the emeralds, like the eyes of the boar goddess. At last, Mary Ann, everybody's gone and we're alone. You're my wife now. Kiss me. Wait. Oh, you mustn't keep your husband waiting. A year I waited for you, Miriam. You shall wait but a short time longer. No other woman has ever put me off like you have, and I'm crazy about you. Nutty about your eyes. They fascinate me. Green like emeralds. Why didn't you bring your emeralds? The eyes of the boar goddess at our wedding. I shall wear them now. For you alone. Are you going to put them on? Well, that's swell. God, I'm like a kid with you. When I finally fell for a skirt, I fell hard. And I won't be afraid no more now. 
for you'll be always with me. <laughs> you won't leave me on the wedding night like you left Dutch a year ago. I will not leave you. I did not leave him. If you hadn't have left him, you'd have known what killed him. I do know what killed him. And why have you never told me? Say, what are you talking that way for? Why are you standing there with your back turned to me? What are you doing, Marianne? You seem to be growing taller, thinner somehow. And what are you doing? Turn around. Let me see you. Let me look into your eyes. Look. <gasps> Them emeralds are your eyes. Yes. You're the boa goddess. That drum. That drum. It means I claim my final sacrifice. No. No. I can't move. Only stare into your eyes. And the body's lengthening. Changing into a monster snake. Soon I will coil around you. No. Fold over fold. And you will only gaze in my eyes and whimper. Only when my coils tighten will you scream just once. No. Then will I give you your promised kiss. The kiss of death for the Mary Ann who was only a squaw. Oh, oh. I begin to coil. Oh, so cold. So cold. No, I can't die. For gain you defile the people's faith. I bind your feet. No. For gain you betray the people's hospitality. I bind your arm. No. For gain you destroy the woman's love and life. I bind your heart. No. For this you have been left the last of the three. Today as you yourself love. As after a year of mortal fear. You aspire to happiness and peace. Today I coil about your worthless soul and crush. Oh. Ah! about the boa goddess, the queen of all the snakes. <laughs> well, Satan and me have business to attend to now. Important business, Satan. Near midnight, Satan. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this week's Retro Radio, Old Time Radio in the Dark. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And if you like the show, please share it with someone you know who also loves old time radio and pulp audio. If you want to hear even more, drop an email to WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com and get an instant reply with links to download full-length pulp audiobooks pulp ebooks and old time radio shows absolutely free. That's Weird Darkness at RadioArchives.com. I'm Darren Marlar. I'll see you next time for Retro Radio, Old Time Radio in the Dark.